TypeScript compilers and in-browser dev tools, remote debugging, and native message logs. These are a few of my favorite things to debug Ionic applications that aren't behaving the way you want them to. In this video, we're going to use those tools to help understand the errors that are occurring in our Ionic applications and then to help solve those issues. And one of the main uh, inspirations for this video in particular is just the amount of times I see people struggling with what is now commonly referred to as the white screen of death in Ionic applications. Uh, basically, when you're expecting your application to run, but you're just seeing a white screen, uh, almost every time this happens, it's because there is some error occurring. Uh, so it's just a matter of first understanding how to find that error, uh, find out what's happening, and then you can start to you know, search that, uh, figure out how to actually address the issue. Uh, but if we don't understand what error is occurring, then we're going to struggle to really do anything. So we're going to focus on these four main places that you can look to try and understand where those errors are occurring. And as I just mentioned, that is the TypeScript compiler or your terminal, the in-browser dev tools, which you are likely familiar with using already. Perhaps you're not, but a lot of people will come across these tools early on. Uh, then we have uh, remote debugging. So using those same browser dev tools, except when your application is actually running on a device. And then finally, we have the actual native uh, log messages from Xcode or Android Studio. Uh, if you are running your application uh, natively on a device, for example. And so sometimes we can get errors in different places and maybe you'll see your application works in the browser when it's running on your computer. But when you try to deploy it to a device and you run it, it's just not working. You, you get a white screen or whatever happens. It doesn't have to be that particular problem. Uh, but the main thing is trying to figure out what error is occurring and then trying to solve that. So this video is mainly going to focus on the identification of what is going wrong. So we're going to go through all of these step by step, starting with the terminal and then working our way all, uh, all the way up to the native log messages. Uh, you don't have to go through this uh, step by step process every time you have some issue. As you get more experience, you might immediately know, well, this is probably a, a native sort of issue. So I'm just gonna skip straight to looking at those uh, Xcode logs, for example. But we're going to assume we're at a point where we have no idea what's going on. We have no idea why it's breaking. So we're gonna start at the beginning and just work our way through to the end. So I have an Ionic Angular application running on screen right now. And we're gonna use that for our example, but it doesn't have to be an Ionic Angular application. Could be Ionic and Stencil, React, Vue, whatever else. Uh, it doesn't really matter. These concepts are going to be the same no matter what you're using, uh, even if you're not using Ionic at all. So I have the default Ionic Angular application running. I've got it served in the browser here, and we can see a terminal with the little sort of log messages uh, popping up right now. So everything is working right now. The application is running fine. So what we're going to do is just introduce an error and see what happens. And so the first thing we're going to focus on is those errors that we can identify in the terminal or TypeScript compiler. So what we expect with these kind of errors is that we will see the error message in our terminal. So let's do something that's going to trigger that. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, cause some kind of compile issue uh, in our code here. Uh, so I'm just gonna misspell Angular here, for example. So I'm gonna remove that R and you can see in VS Code, obviously we get this red underline here indicating that something is wrong. Uh, so this is kind of like a before step to looking in the terminal if you are using site with error checking and, and type checking like VS Code, then obviously pay attention to these errors because that's probably gonna tell you uh, what is wrong straight away. Uh, but if you're not using something like VS Code or maybe, maybe you just didn't see uh, this problem, uh, we'll have a look and see how that shows up in the terminal. So if I save this now, uh, if we jump back into the browser, uh, it's actually going to tell us that there was this uh, compile error. Uh, but if we look in the terminal here, we can see that something has gone wrong. So we can see here, it says module not found, uh, error can't resolve Angular core in you know, the rest of the path here. So we can see that this is the issue and then we might be able to go and fix that. So this is just a silly quick example, but uh, this is sort of the first step. Look in your terminal, in your log messages here, check that the application is compiling correctly and make sure that basically you just wanna see uh, it say compiled successfully and have no errors or warnings and stuff like that. 
So if we again spell that correctly, save that, take a look at the terminal again, and you can see here it just says compiled successfully and that is what we want. Okay, so now let's try something where it compiles successfully but we're still getting some kind of error. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in this case is, uh, I'm gonna try to push to an undefined array. So what I might do here is say, um, public my array, we'll just give that an any type because we're trying to circumvent TypeScript uh, completely here. And then let's just say in the ng on init, which is going to run as soon as this component is initialized, let's try this dot my array dot push. And uh, oops, uh, we'll just push hello to that. Okay, now let's jump into the browser again. And we can see the error. That's going to give it a little refresh. We can see that clearly something is uh, going wrong with the application here. It's a bit of strange behavior for the error, but we can see the um, content error is just kind of cut off there. Uh, if we do look in the terminal, all we see here is it says compiled successfully. Uh, as far as TypeScript is concerned, this is absolutely fine. Uh, but if we look in our, uh, our console now, and if you're not sure how to bring that up, I'll just close that for a second. Uh, basically, you just want to right click in Chrome, click inspect, and then console. And then you'll be able to see these errors here. And so now we can see that uh, it says cannot read property push of undefined. Uh, and that's because we're trying to push to something that is not an array. And so again, I could come find that and fix that up. We're just going to uh, remove that. And now we have our error fixed. So let's suppose now that we have looked in the terminal and everything is fine, it's compiled successfully. We look in the browser console here in the dev tools, also fine, no errors popping up there. But when we run the application on a device, say we run it on our phone or a simulator, uh, we're getting some kind of error or some kind of issue and we don't know what's wrong. And so the next step from there would be to launch a remote debugging session so you can continue to use these same dev tools, uh, but you'll be able to debug the application that is running on your uh, phone or tablet or whatever you're running on, uh, rather than debugging just what's in the browser on your desktop. So for a more in-depth look into how to do that, I'm gonna to link to two separate videos. I've done a video on doing this for both iOS and Android, but I'm just gonna give you a really quick example now of doing this on an Android device. So I have the application, um, I've got capacitor set up in this application. I've got Android Studio set up here. And what I'm going to do is just run this on my uh, Android device. So I'm just gonna click the little play button there. I'm gonna wait for my uh, Pixel to pop up. So we're gonna run that on the Google Pixel 2. Say okay. And now actually gonna go back to the browser. And I'm just gonna wait for that to uh, compile and launch on my phone. Okay, so the application is running on my Android device now. So what I can do still in, I'm just in my normal uh, desktop Chrome environment. What we can do is go to Chrome uh, forward slash forward slash uh, inspect. And apparently my guest window account says incognito mode, uh, I guess. So what I'm gonna do is just open that up in another window. Okay, so I just opened up in a normal Chrome uh, window now. Again, this isn't uh, anything different to normal Chrome. This is literally just a normal browser window on my desktop. And you go to Chrome colon forward slash forward slash uh, inspect. And then you should see, if you have connected devices here, you should see them pop up. Uh, if you don't, it's probably because you need to enable uh, USB debugging on your device. Uh, again, I'd recommend looking at the two videos. I'll link in the description for exactly how to do that for both Android and iOS. Uh, but if you have the development environment set up properly, you will see this pop up here. And so we can see under Pixel 2 XL, I can see my Ionic application. If I click inspect now, that's going to launch another DevTools window here. And this is actually what is running on my device right now. And so this is the same sort of environment as the normal browser dev tools, uh, except it's just looking at the, the browser that's running on the native device. So our first point of call here would be to look in this console. And again, we if there was some kind of issue, we could potentially see the error being listed in this console here whilst it is running on the device. 
So if you still don't see an error here, you've looked in the terminal, you've tried it in the desktop dev tools, you've set up a remote uh, debugging session uh, to inspect the device running on your phone. Uh, the next thing we can try after that is to look at the native uh, logs to see if we can get any information from that. So we can do this in both Android Studio and Xcode. So since I just ran that in uh, Android Studio, I'm going to pop that back up again. And if I clicked on Logcat here, I can get this, uh, these errors or log messages from the sort of native build and run through Android Studio. And so I might look through here to see if I can find anything that might give me some information as to what error might be occurring. Uh, there is no particular error occurring in this case. I haven't set up an example for that, uh, but you might see something in here. And the kinds of errors that would more, be more likely to pop up in here are things that might be related to the native code. Uh, so for example, maybe you've set up the Facebook Connect plugin and you're trying to do a Facebook login. Uh, maybe your Facebook app ID or something hasn't been configured properly. Uh, that's a scenario where perhaps the error might not show up in any of these um, in the terminal or in the dev tools, uh, but you might see an error here complaining about some missing configuration or something like that. And we can also do that in Xcode. So I'll just quickly pop that up as well. Uh, so in Xcode, if we just run, I'm gonna run it on an iPhone 8 simulator here. So that'll build and run on the simulator. And then as it runs, we're going to see the uh, log messages pop up over on the right hand side here. And again, there is no errors at the moment. So these are just all normal log messages. Uh, but again, you could potentially see something in here, some kind of error uh, that indicates something is wrong. So obviously that is only the first part of the issue. Uh, you still need to figure out how to fix the error once you identify it, uh, but that is the most important thing. If you can figure out what the error is, it makes it much easier to search around for solutions. You can just Google it or go to a forum or something like that if you don't understand what the error means. Uh, but having that sort of information is a lot more valuable than uh, say going to the Ionic forum and saying that you, uh, you have a white screen in your application. Uh, because there is a sort of a million different reasons that could uh, cause that problem. Uh, but if you can you know, search on Google or post on a forum that you have that behavior, you're experiencing this white screen when you run your application, uh, but you're also getting this error associated with it, uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to figure out or for other people to help you. Okay, so I hope this video uh, has helped you understand how to go about debugging your applications a bit better. Uh, if you did like this video, please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.